In this video tutorial, I want to give you a tour of our course just to get you acquainted with navigation and the way that I have set things up. Um, this is our homepage for World Civilization I. You will find uh, my contact information as well as a link to announcements, which is also here um, at the top. If you scroll down past the image, which is from um, Poma de Ayala's um, account of the conquest of the Inca, um, you will see my uh, more detailed contact, or excuse me, my, my contact info at a glance. Um, so there's my email address. You can use this number to text me. I apologize if these are a little bit covered by my face right now. Um, you can uh, contact me via Twitter, since we'll be working together there. Um, or let me hide this. Um, you can use this link to um, contact me during virtual office hours. Um, I am noticing an error there. I'll fix that. I apologize for it. That should say Monday um, from 9 to 11. Um, so my virtual office hours are then. Uh, but again, I try to be very accessible via all of those means, and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. Scrolling back up, um, you'll use this image, so you can just click on it to begin the course. You can also go into the modules to get there, uh, but we'll click the image to begin the course because this will take you directly to module one, um, which several of you, I think, have already gotten into because I've seen you introducing yourselves on the discussion board. Um, this module will take you through um, the objectives of what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks, provide an introduction to the course, everything we're doing this semester. Um, I'll be posting this video here. Um, and below, I'm going to leave these links in because they are articles about reading strategies. Um, they're very helpful for any college course, for a college career. Um, there is so much reading assigned and to do for college courses. Um, it's virtually impossible to read everything word for word. And that's actually not always the best way to read. Um, I think I'll add one more article here that talks about reading laterally rather than vertically. Um, so, you know, reading this intro that I just skimmed over, um, you could go word for word down there, or you could um, look for the bolded words, pick things out, click on the links, and uh, cross-reference those things with other uh, sources you find. Um, that's essentially what reading um, laterally on the internet means. Um, since we're doing our course online, we're going to be using a few digital tools, including Twitter. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to have some conversations about um, the best ways to create information online, the best ways to share our knowledge, and um, participate in ongoing discussions about historical knowledge in an online setting. Um, so again, hopefully these, as well as this video, are helpful for you as we get started. There are links to the syllabus and all of the um, assignment instructions here. So please look through all of those. I did complete a Twitter tutorial for you. Um, here's where you'll go to the discussion board to complete your introduction. Um, you'll do a discussion on historical thinking for the second week of the module. And your first work on Twitter will be about defining civilization. So it'll be um, kind of criticizing and turning the notion of civilization on its head to think about the ways it's been used in the past and what it means that we are studying what, uh, world civilizations, I should say, in this class together. I'm going to also show you module two because um, this one follows the pattern that will be typical for all of the rest of the modules for the entire course. Um, so for each of these, please do um, take some time off for the Labor Day holiday. Um, I know that with online learning especially, it can be easy, and I do this too, to just work through the weekend or work on days off. It is important and great to take time off, though, if at all possible. I understand, I understand sometimes it's not, but if at all possible. So each module will um, include a couple of paragraphs where I introduce the main themes and topics that we will be studying during that two-week period. Then as you scroll down, you will see the work that is due by the first Sunday of the module at 11.59 p.m. Let me scroll back up for one second. Um, each of these lists, which date the first and the second Sundays are, let me go back down again. 
Um, so by the first Sunday, you will need to do the reading, the reading tweets, and post your question to the discussion board. During the second week of the module, you will post your responses on the discussion board, complete your journal entry, and um, if you choose, complete one of the required primary source responses. Um, here are the outcomes for this module. Below that, you'll always find the readings. Primarily, we will be focusing on the textbook that is listed in the syllabus. Um, occasionally, I may provide an article or a website that will be linked to here, but there will be nothing else to purchase. I will make use of John Green's Crash Course World History videos for the class, but I'm also looking at different podcast episodes that I can put here in each module to go along with the readings that we'll be doing. And as you've read here, um, the videos and podcasts are meant to be supplemental materials. The focus of our work will be on the reading. So if there's something you just don't quite understand and you see that I you can't see it from the way that these are listed, um, I might have to fix that. Uh, but you see that there is an episode on um, the beginning of sedentary agriculture in Mesopotamia, and that was something that you weren't quite as clear on in the readings. By all means, you know, watch that film clip. The next section in each module will remind you to complete your reading tweets. Um, if you click on the course hashtag, it will open a new tab or window, and it will take you to Twitter if you're logged into Twitter. It'll take you to a place where you can see what people have been posting. Uh, it's already set to latest, and you can add to the conversation there. If you have any questions about how to do that, please view the Twitter tutorial that I've posted in Module 1. The second step, of course, is to complete the discussion. For each discussion, you'll pose an open-ended question uh, that is uh, requiring some evaluation or analysis, not explanation. Um, if you have questions about any of that after you've reviewed the discussion board guidelines, don't hesitate to ask me. This will take you to the discussion board where you can complete your work. Similarly, with the journal entry, I've given you the instructions there for what you will need to write about. Journals are meant as a way of summing up all of the learning that you've done for the module. You can either complete those as a Word document and submit them um, here on Canvas, or if you would like, you can post those on your own blog um, or some other digital means of creation. That's completely up to you. It just depends on if that's something you like to do. Um, the primary source response, as I mentioned, um, this requires you to choose one of the primary sources included in our textbook and provide an in-depth evaluation of it. There are instructions of how to do that in the assignment. Um, here's the link to submit your work. You do not have to complete one of these for every module, but there is a spot to complete one for every module. So what that means is Canvas is set to only give you a score for three of these. It'll drop the others. Um, so uh, just make sure you need to keep track of this yourself. Make sure that you complete three of these over the course of the semester. So again, in modules two through seven, you will have a chance to do this. You need to do three of these assignments over the course of the semester. At the end of each module is a self-assessment and looking ahead, which essentially just gives you a checklist again so that you can make sure you've completed all of your work. Um, it looks ahead to the next module's topics and lets you know about the upcoming work that we'll need to do for the final project. Um, as long as you keep tabs on the modules and on the syllabus, you should have a good sense of what is due and when, and what you need to do. Again, as I mentioned, I try to make myself very available, so please, please just ask questions whenever you have them. I'm always happy to chat with you about anything relative to the course. Um, I clicked on the syllabus tab. Here is a way to quickly reference the syllabus, as well as all of the different assignment guidelines. And if you scroll down, here's a list of the course due dates. All right, hopefully um, that will help you to navigate the class. Um, if you want to go straight to the discussions, you can use this tab rather than going to them through the modules. Similarly with the assignments, if you know you want to submit your journal entry, but you don't want to go all the way back through the module to do it, you can click on assignments and find the appropriate journal entry submission area there. You can check your grades here, um, find out who else is in the class here. 
Um, and um, I think pages actually shouldn't be there. I meant uh, to replace that with something else, so I will fix that. Um, these others are uh, institutional links to your access to your Office 365 account as a student and to some online tutoring, which um, please take advantage of everything like that that's available to you. All right, hopefully this has been a helpful tour of the course. If it wasn't and you still have questions, um, or if you just have questions anyway, please ask me those via email, text, or Twitter.